your new inspiration station, Worship 94.5 FM. Your man, Ro J. If you've been riding out with me over the past month or so, you have heard me show love to my guy, Josh X, and his new single, I Miss You. It's been getting so much love across the country, and the single is his first Billboard Top 20 R&B single. Had to get him on the line to holler at him, of course. Josh, my dude, how has life been treating you? Thank you, bro. Life has been great, man. I'm glad to be catching up with you again. Can't complain, you know. It's a crazy year, 2020, for everybody. Right. And um, just happened to feel creative and wanted to put some music out that represented how I'm feeling. And I miss you came to life, and it feels good that uh, people are very receptive to it. And the Billboard charts definitely showed me uh, that the song is definitely becoming a hit. Well, between Billboard and the reception from your fans, I know that you're more than pleased with it now. I know we've been on lockdown for the most part for like a year now. So tell me how the song actually came about. Um, So the song was produced by Jay White did it. He produced a few records for Cardi, um, Bodak Yellow. And we were working on the same team. And I miss you with a joint that he had for me and with Stash. And he played me the track and I instantly fell in love with it. Um, of course, this was before Bodak Yellow and all these other records we were working on at the time came out. Um, so shout out to the producer for showing me, you know, the record and her and me. Shout out to me for knowing that it was a good record when I heard the beat. Um, right. I wrote to it. Um, I felt like that's what, you know, at the time when I wrote to it, I, I was going through a relationship problem where I, I didn't really know what I had until I lost it and um, kind of made me just write, write about it. And I wanted to get it off my chest and I miss you as the record that came to life. And I'm very proud of all the work that it, that it has done. And um, I'm happy with it. You know, we shot the video with my first quarantine video, which was crazy, you know, having to shoot a video in a pandemic was definitely different. And, um, I'm just happy with it, you know. It started off being a personal song, dealing with my personal relationship, and then I put it out into the world, and now people are relating to it. Yeah, the pandemic has made us all work a little harder as far as creativity. Now, when you first came out, you were linked to Jada Kiss, and then as time went on, you got linked with Cardi B. In her earlier days, you're a trained pianist. You sing R&B. I know people like to try and put artists in a box, but that may be a challenge when it comes to you. To be honest, you, you really can't. I don't think you can. How would you describe your style to someone who's coming across you for the first time? Um, being in this industry, as you know, people tend to put you in a box, and it's glad that you know you, you recognize the, the, the range of styles that I have. Um, I hate to be put in a box because I feel like God gave me a gift to be creative, and um, I, I use that gift in the best of my ability. I feel like if you come across my music today, I would say it's new R&B, um, but still traditional with a little bit of 90s, you know, influences in it because I feel like that's what's missing in music today. And... um when I when I write a song, I try to take a little bit of the old mix with the new and give you my, it's like a hybrid version of R&B, but I let the fans and the people that come across make that decision, but that's my best ability to describe it my sound. It's like old with the new, like a modern day Stevie Wonder, I would say, kind of like how Stevie acts of me to be, and I've been sticking to that. You know, I've been sticking to that advice Stevie and the mandate Stevie Wonder gave me early in my career to be an artist that just brings change to people's lives with music. So if you're looking for some uplifting music or to help you with some stuff to get through your personal ups and downs in life, I think John Six is the best. Well, that is one thing I pride myself on here with the love offering. I want to inspire and motivate. <laughs> I also want to give like good vibes, good energy, all of that to my listeners. So I feel you. Now, I know you make everything look easy, but have you been presented with any challenges as an artist? Um, it's always challenges, um, especially with the time we're living in. Um, people are so used to the, to the fast music and the fast sound. And um, when I say fast sound, like, you know, things that really don't have no relevance to what everyday people are going to going through. And um, the challenging of that is that love is kind of not cool today. It's, like, played out. 
And um, when I was with Stevie one day, he was asking me to be an artist that, you know, helps people with love and tell these great love stories. I was like, Stevie, you sure? Like, do you listen to the radio? Like, everybody's calling Shorty Scott. And, you know, I ain't really trying to be, you know, the op in what the majority is doing. But that was in the beginning of my career. I felt like I had a lot against me because, I, you know, it's easier to be a follower than a leader. But once I found myself um, and got confident with my sound, I realized that, you know, my my sound is necessary and needed. If it wasn't, it wouldn't be on the charts, and people wouldn't be gravitating to, gravitating to it. So I'm finding myself become easier with being this artist and representing that. But in the beginning, it was definitely a hard space to get to. Well, let me know what fans can expect from you for the rest of 2021. Well, I'm looking to absolutely get on the road um, as soon as we open back up safely. Um, that's, like, the first thing I've really been missing, touching the stage. I mean, that's, like, really a close part of my artistry. And I've been out of the stage, just been doing virtual shows this whole past year. But I'm very thankful to be alive, and I'm not complaining. But that's first. I can't wait to see my fans in city to city. And then um, I got a bunch of new things going on. I, I recently decided to take on an acting role for the first time. Um, Sisters Keepers, the show, it's on Amazon Prime. You can check it out. Um, it's a show about, you know, I'm playing a role by the name of Derek, and Derek is just a best friend of Jay who lost his mom recently, and, you know, he's happened to take care of his whole family and the pressures of the world losing his mom. So that was really dope for me to try, and I love acting. And you can look out for that show on Amazon Prime, and, some more acting roles that I've been working on and hopefully get presented to come, you know, to life 2021. And you have the cooking show too, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. I got the cooking show called That Guy Can Cook, which I decided to link up with my Uncle Manny, who's my mom's younger brother, whose son is a celebrity chef in Iceland. So this is kind of a crazy story. My my family is very international. Um, we're Haitian, but we mixed around with people all over the world. So I have a cousin named Runa who's a celebrity chef in Iceland. And his mom is from Iceland, and my uncle, who's his father, is from Haiti. And um, he's killing it out there in Iceland. But I'm like, yo, if my cousin could cook like that, I got to learn how to cook because these ladies be wanting it all. You know what I'm saying? They be wanting a the meal, they be wanting a the bag, they be wanting it all. So I'm like, let me pick up some skills here. And I created this show with my uncle, whose son is a celebrity chef because he got it from his father. And he's been teaching me on this show that we created called That Guy Can Cook. And I'm real excited about it because it's not only for guys, but it's for anybody that wants to learn. But we represent and for the guys and showing the ladies that we're going to knock down the stereotype that, you know, it's only the ladies that know how to chef it up. So, you know, right. look out for that, the Instagram. And then I got an experience lessons virtual, like, online school in 2021. I'll be teaching all my fans how to learn my music and music that they're into. On the piano, whether it's singing lessons, uh, guitar lessons, um, songwriting, and a bunch of cool stuff. So I've been real busy. 2021, I'm just about building different brands and showing my, my, my supporters that I'm just more, I'm not just a song. I'm actually an entrepreneur. And that's how I've been doing a lot of things in this, you know, whole time being an artist. I've also been building a lot of businesses. So I'm getting comfortable about talking about them now. And, 2021 is about putting them out there. So look out for that. A very busy man. We love to see it. We we really do. Working it out and in your element. I've been spinning your new joint here on the Love Offering. It's a whole vibe, for real. Uh, before I let you go, can I get you to introduce it for me? What's up? What's up, man? It's your boy, Josh X, and I'm here chilling with my boy, Rose at the Love Offering. You already know. Thanks again for calling in, Josh. I want you guys to keep it locked right here. Your new inspiration station is Worship 94.5 FM.